ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فان خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار all praise is due to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the one who is truly worthy of all praise to allah belongs the most beautiful names and attributes of complete perfection and all thanks is due to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone the one who is the source of all blessings <coughs> and peace and salutations upon the messenger of allah the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam who allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent as a mercy to all of the alamin every khutbah i mention this statement that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as a mercy to all of the alameen rahmatun lil alameen and it's occurred to me many times that this is something that we should address in one of the khutbahs so today alhamdulillah if Allah gives us life we want to discuss this statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as a mercy to all of the alameen and this khutbah I want to inshallah try and discuss it although I'm sure the time will not allow for us to complete the whole khutbah but at least some portion of this khutbah inshallah we will discuss the mercy of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Inshallah, we want to discuss it under seven inshallah, subheadings. The first is Rahmatul Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bi ummati. The mercy of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with his ummah. The second, Rahmatul Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fi da'wati. The mercy of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his da'wah. The third, رحمه النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم بالمراه the mercy of the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم with the women the fourth رحمه النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم بالاطفال the mercy of the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم with the children fifthly رحمه النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم باهل المعاصي addressed him and this ayah that is to be recited till the day of judgment wa ma arsalnaka illa rahmatan lil alamin and we did not send you except as a mercy to all of the alamin allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us this statement which is found in surah al-anbiya verse 107 ibn abbas radhiyallahu anhuma said concerning this rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam bu'itha rahmatan min bari wa fajr the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was sent as a mercy to the righteous and the unrighteous 
فَمَنْ آمَنَ بِالنَّبِيِّ So whoever believed in the Prophet, تَمَّتْ لَهُ الرَّحْمَةِ فِي الدُّنْيَا Whoever believes in the Prophet in the dunya, then the mercy will be completed for him in the dunya, وَالْآخِرَةِ And in the Akhirah. مِسْتَاقًا Verified The statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيُعَذِّبَهُمْ وَأَنْتَ فِيهِمْ وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ مُعَذِّبَهُمْ وَهُمْ يَسْتَرْفِرُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not punish them whilst you are in them, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, or amongst them. وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ مُعَذِّبَهُمْ وَهُمْ يَسْتَرْفِرُونَ Nor will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punish them whilst they are seeking forgiveness with Allah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as a mercy to all of the Alameen. In fact, Imam Muslim narrates in his Sahih. And I hope that inshallah all of the brothers are paying attention today. Because mercy is something that the Ummah is in need of. We have too many critics and too many enemies. Let alone the enemies from outside, but the enemies within. And the critics within. It's very easy to see somebody else's faults. But when do we find our own faults and, and try and rectify our own faults? Listen to this hadith. The Prophet ﷺ was addressed by one of the companions. Hadith is in Sahih Muslim on the authority of Abu Bayr that he came to the that somebody came to the Prophet ﷺ and he said to him, Make dua against the mushrikeen. Invoke Allah's curse, Allah's wrath, Allah's anger against the mushrikeen, the disbelievers, the polytheists. What was the Prophet's response to this? قال المصطفى صلى الله عليه وسلم أني لم أبعث لعانا إنما بعثت رحمة I was not sent as a man who would always be cursing, la'anan, mubalat, one who's always cursing. Wa inna ma bu'ithu rahma. Verily, I was sent as a mercy. Subhanallah, what a profound statement! I was not sent to curse the people. I was sent as a mercy. And so the Ummah of Muhammad should take this as a good one. We haven't been sent or raised as the best nation so that we can curse. And this was the Mushrikeen who were fighting and killing the Prophet Look at the Ummah today. There are some people who claim and profess to have Iman. And they make la'an on the people who stood with the Prophet and in fact, between the arrows and the swords and the javelins of the mushrikeen and the Prophet's jasad, Mubarak, the companions. Some people profess faith, yet you will find them, they were cursing Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman and Ali. <coughs> what sort of Ummah have we become? And the Prophet is telling us, I wasn't resurrected. To curse the people. Innama bu'ithu rahmatan. I was sent as a mercy. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in another statement he says, Innama ana rahmatul mubda. Subhanallah, every statement of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam indicates that this da'wah that he is mercy. Indeed, <coughs> Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as is written in Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim in the authority of Abdullah ibn Amr that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam recited one day the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and don't forget we are addressing this issue Rahmat al-Nabi bi ummati the mercy of the Prophet to his ummah that's what we are addressing and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam read this statement from Surah Ibrahim and in fact, it is a statement 
which is worthy of some thought. رَبِّ إِنَّهُمْنَ أَضْلَلْنَا كَثِيرًا مِنَ النَّاسِ فَمَنْ تَبِعَنِي فَإِنَّهُ مِنِّي وَمَنْ عَصَانِي فَإِنَّهَ غَفُورُ الرَّحِيمِ This is the statement of Sayyidina Ibrahim a.s. And he's talking about the idols. رَبِّ إِنَّهُمْنَ أَضْلَلْنَا كَثِيرًا مِنَ النَّاسِ O my Lord, indeed they have caused many a people to go astray. فَمَنْ تَبِعَنِي فَإِنَّهُ مِنِّي So whoever follows me, then he is from me. وَمَنْ أَصَانِي And whoever disobeys me, فَإِنَّكَ غَفُورُ الرَّحِيمِ Then indeed, you are most forgiving, most merciful. And then he read the statement of Isa a.s. In which Isa a.s. says, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala narrates to us his story, إِن تُعَذِّبْهُمْ فَإِنَّهُمْ إِبَادَكَ وَإِن تَغْذِرْ لَهُمْ فَإِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ Isa a.s. is saying, O Allah my Lord, إِن تُعَذِّبْهُمْ If you were to punish them, فَإِنَّهُمْ إِبَادَكَ that indeed they are your slaves. And if you would forgive them, And according to the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Nazara Jibra'il. Jibra'il and Sam came to the Prophet Fasal al Mustafa al Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam what makes him cry. Fakal al Habib. Ummati, ummati ya Jibreel. My nation, my nation, O Jibreel. Fasal al Jibreel in the sama. So Jibra'il ascended to the heavens. And he said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Yabki Muhammad ala ummatihi. He said, Oh my Lord, Muhammad is crying about his ummah, his nation. فَأَمَرَ اللَّهُ جِبْرِيلِ مَرَّةً سَهْنِيًا So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered Jibra'il for a second time to descend. وَقَالَ لَهُ And he said to him, Ya Jibreel, أَنزِلْ إِلَى مُحَمَّدِ وَقُلْ لَهُ Descend to Muhammad and say to him, إِنَّا سَنُرْضِيكَ فِي أُمَّتِكَ وَلَا نَسُوكَ We will do with your ummah that which will please you and it will not distress you. Look at the Prophet and his concern for his ummah. When the Prophet read the statement of Ibrahim a.s. What is Ibrahim a.s. doing? He's making dua for the disobedient in his ummah. And the same thing Isa a.s. from the Ulul Azam Rusul. They are making dua for their ummah. They are making dua for their ummah. So the Prophet is driven to tears for his ummah. Me and you 
and the 1.2 billion or more today and those Muslims that went before us and those Muslims that will come after us. The Prophet ﷺ is crying and weeping for them. This is the mercy of the Prophet ﷺ to his Ummah. As we know, لِكُلِّ نَبِيٍ دَعْوَةٌ مُسْتَجَارٍ For every Nabi there is a dua which will be answered to him. فَتَعَجَّلَ كُلُّ نَبِيٍ بِدَعْوَتِهِ Every Nabi they made the dawah. They've already done their dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Illa ana, the Prophet says, except me. Faqad ikhtabatu da'wati shafa'atan li ummati yawm al I have set aside my dua, which Allah has promised me will be answered. For when? For the day of judgment. Shafa'a fa ma ummah. Look at the concern of the Prophet for his Ummah. As the Prophet says, continuing his statement. It will be for those, for those that will benefit from it, are the ones who will die from my Ummah and they will not associate partners with Allah. They will have not made shirk with Allah. <coughs> Those are the people who will benefit from the shara'ah of the Prophet <laughs> Subhanallah. And do you know, it is not a small number of people that will enter the hellfire. The hadith which is narrated about Adam <laughs> When you will be called on the day of judgment, Allah will call you. And we will told to bring out from his loins, all of the people who will enter the fire. As the narration mentions, أخرج بعض النار من ذريتك فيقول آدم وما بعض النار Who are these who will be sent into the fire? Ya Rabb, فيقول الله Pay attention to this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say من كل ألف تسعمية وتسعة وتسعون إلى النار 999 out of every 1,000. They are the ones who will go into the fire. So one in a thousand, one in a thousand will escape the fire. One in a thousand. This is when we will be hoping and praying with all our soul and all our body that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses with the shafa of the Prophet on the day of judgment. When 9,999 out of every thousand will go into the hellfire. When the companions of the Prophet heard this, subhanAllah, can you imagine what must have gone through their minds and their hearts? Allah said. Allah Muslim said. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, فَحِينَ إِذِنْ يَشِيبُ السَّبِيرِ At that moment, the young child, his hair will turn white. وَتَضَعَ كُلُّ ذَاتِ حَمْدٍ حَمْلَهَا And every child-bearing woman, a woman who has a child, she's pregnant with a child, will drop her load. For fear of entering the fire, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَوْمَ تَرَوْنَهَا تَذْهَرُوا كُلُّ مُرْضِعَةٍ أَمْهَا أَرْضَعْتِ وَتَذَعُوا كُلُّ ذَاتِ حَمْلٍ حَمْلَاهَا وَتَرَى النَّاسَ سُكَارَ وَمَا هُمْ بِسُكَارَ وَذَاكِنَّ عَذَابُ اللَّهِ شَدِيدٍ Surah Al-Hajj Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us this very vivid image of the Qiyamah. On that day, every woman, woman that is nursing a child, she will neglect her child. And every woman that is pregnant will drop her load. And the people will seem as if they are in a state of drunkenness. And then Allah says, but rather the punishment of Allah will be severe. 
The companions of the Prophet وسلم, when they heard this statement, that out of 1,000, only one will be saved. They said, Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah, فَمَنْ يَنْجُو Who will then escape the hellfire? So the Prophet وسلم, said, Abshiru, have glad tidings. فَمَنْ يَعْجُوجُ وَمَعْجُوجُ this Amiatun, Matis Atun, Matis Una, Wamin Kum Wahid. He said that indeed have glad tidings. So verily, Yahuj and Mahjuj will make the 999 only one from amongst you. So as a result of that, the companions of the Prophet made takbir. And the Prophet said to them, Wallah the Nafsi Biyadihi. إِنِّي لَعَرْجُ أَنْ تَكُونُوا ثُلُثُ أَهْلُ الْجَنَّةِ SubhanAllah What fadl this Ummah has? What fadl this Ummah has? The Prophet said, I swear by the one in whose soul, or in whose hand is my soul, that I hope that at least a third of you, this Ummah, will make up the dwellers of the paradise. A third of all of the people that will enter the paradise will be from you. So the companions of the Prophet made takbir and they rejoiced. And then Allah's Messenger وسلم, said, Inni la'arjuan ta'kunu this for Ahlul Jannah. Ya Bushra. Ya Bushra. Half of the people I hope that half of the people of Jannah will be from this Ummah, the Prophet said. All of those Ummah that went before us, they will form one half. And this Ummah will form the other half of the dwellers of the paradise. Look at the Nabi of this Ummah and his concern for his Ummah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <coughs> tells us وَسَابِقُوا إِلَىٰ مَرْفِعَةِ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ وَجَنَّةٍ عَرْضُوهَا كَعَرْضِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ عُعِدَّتْ لِلَّذِينَ آمُنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرُسُلِهِ ذَلِكَ فَضْلُ اللَّهِ يُؤْتِيهِ مَنْ يَشَاءٌ وَاللَّهُ ذُو الْفَضْلُ الْعَظِيمُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us Why hurry race to the vip Forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our Lord, and the paradise, whose is expanse, whose width that expanse, is the expanse or the distance between the heavens and the earth. Allah says, And it is prepared for those who believe in Allah and His messengers. This is the fadl of Allah, the blessings and favors of Allah, Allah gives them to whomsoever He wills. Allahu Akbar. Brothers and sisters, what are we waiting for? Allah Subhanahu wa Taala tells us, "Qul in kuntum tuhibun Allah, fatbiyuni yuhibkum Allah, wa yafir lakum dhulubakum, wa Allahu Ghafurur Rahim." Subhanallah. Allah is telling us, say, indeed if you truly love Allah, then follow me. Allah will love you and forgive you your sins. Indeed, Allah is of forgiving, most merciful. But brothers and sisters, how many of us, we are ready with the slogans and proclamations of love for the Prophet but they are empty words. They are empty words. When Allah orders us that we should follow the Prophet I ask you, from the highest level to the lowest level, from a state right down to the individual, where is the sunnah of the Prophet being exemplified? Who is making the Prophet his khudwa? We don't practice the Sharia in our countries. The Sharia is not practiced in our homes and not upon ourselves. How? 
Can we make proclamations of love for the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam? We are the furthest from his sunnah. The furthest from his sunnah. Indeed, as narrated in the authority of Sahih ibn Sa'd al-Sa'idi, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Ana fartukum al hawl I will be the first to precede you to the hawl. The hawl is the fount which the Prophet will be given. The spring. Which is one of the merits that he's given above the other Anbiya. And the hawls of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, its water is whiter than milk and sweeter than honey. And whoever drinks from it will never feel thirsty again. The Prophet said, Ana fartukum al hawl. I'm the first of you that will arrive at the fount. And the Prophet said, Man marra alayya sharib, wa man sharib lam yadma abadan. Whoever amongst you will pass, will drink. And whoever drinks, he will never feel thirsty again. And then the Prophet said something. Something that should cause us now to be worried. And in this case, not just worried, but worried and moved to do the right action. Then a group of people will pass by the hawl. I will know them and they will know me. I will know them and they will know me. Thumma yuhalu bayni wa baynahum. And then there will be a barrier between me and them. فأقول, so I will say, the Prophet is saying, They are from my Ummah, they are from my nation. فيقارلي, so it will be said to me, You do not know what they have done after you. فأقولوا, سحقن, سحقن لمن غير بعدي. So I will say, away with those, away with those who have changed after me. <coughs> the hawl of the Prophet <coughs> and the war of the hawl and drinking from the hawl <coughs> can be only given to those who followed the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It will not be by who shouts the loudest to say, I love the Prophet. But who actually loved the Prophet by exemplifying the character of the Prophet, the ibad of the Prophet, the statement of the Prophet. Indeed, the Prophet ﷺ was sent as a mercy to all of the Alameen. But subhanAllah, who will mercy, who will benefit from the mercy of the of this Nabi? Complete mercy, complete benefit. The one who followed the Prophet ﷺ, and one who didn't follow him complete, then he will not receive the benefit in the day of judgment, in the qiyam. Brothers and sisters, indeed Allah's Messenger ﷺ, his akhlaq was the Quran. And we see today that subhanAllah, this akhlaq of the Prophet ﷺ, so much has been written concerning it, that we find that the bookshelves are now under such pressure from the Mujalladat and the weight of those Mujalladat. How much has been said? How much has been written concerning the akhlaq of the Prophet <coughs> <coughs> But where are we to be found with the akhlaq of the Prophet <coughs> Where are we to be found? The next answer, Rahmat al fi da'wati, or fi da'wati, the mercy of the Prophet and his da'wah. And there is no doubt that if you want to give da'wah, then one of the things that you should have in your heart is concern for people. <coughs> Not everybody who professes to be making da'wah has concern for people. Sometimes it is just so that I can overcome other people and look as if I have conquered them, overcome them and I am above them. This is not da'wah. This is not da'wah. Da'wah to the people is to have concern for the people. And look at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said concerning the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَنَا And it was by the mercy of Allah that you were gentle, soft towards Him. وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضْضًا غَلِيدَ الْقَلْبِ لَمْ فَضْضًا مِنْ حَوْلِ And if you were harsh and severe in your heart, لَمْ فَضْضًا مِنْ حَوْلِ They would have fled from you. Look at the Prophet and how he has been described. Soft and gentle. Allah's Messenger said, His da'wah was rahmah. So we see when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He addresses the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and He says to him, Ud'u ila sabili rabbika bil hikmati wal mawidati al-hasanati wa ja'alilhum bil latiji ahsan. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered his Prophet to call to the ways of his Lord Bil Hikmah with wisdom Wal Mawidat al Hasana and with good admonition. And are you with them in ways which are noble? This is the da'wah of the Prophet, how he was told to make da'wah. Subhanallah. Look at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, says in Surah Al-Imran when he says to his two of his Anbiya Nabiyyin Kareemain Who? Musa and Harun So many statements of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala اِذْهَبَا إِلَىٰ فِرْعَوْنَ إِنَّهُ طَغَىٰ Go to Fir'aun for verily he has transgressed And in Surah Taha Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says فَقُولَ لَهُ قَوْلًا لَيِّنًا لَعَلَّهُ يَتَذَكَّرَ أَوْ يَعْجَىٰ Two noble prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are being sent to the worst of all of mankind. Fir'aun, who has transgressed all boundaries to the extent that now he is a self-professed God. In Amr, Rabbi Allah. What does Allah say to these two prophets? فَقُولَ لَهُ قَوْلًا لَيِّنًا Say to him a gentle word. A gentle word. Sometimes I think that our da'wah is more like making jihad. Instead of being soft and gentle, we are so quick to draw the sword and cut off the head. And the Prophet is being told to be gentle. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sending these two noble prophets to Fir'aun and telling them, say to him a gentle word. A gentle word. SubhanAllah. <coughs> From the Sa'adat of the Tabi'in Qatada, he says, when he read this ayah, he cried and he said, وَقَالَ سُبْحَانَكَ سُبْحَانَكَ رَبِّي مَا أَحْنَمُكُ تَأْمُرُ مُوسَى وَهَارُونَ أَنْ يَقُولَ لِفِرْعَوْنِ قَوْلًا لَيِّنَا When he read this statement, he cried. He said, O oh my Lord, glory be to you. How kind are you that you order Musa and Harun to say to Fir'aun such a soft and gentle word. And then he says, فَإِنْ كَانَ هَذَا هُوَ حِلْمُكَ بِفِرْعَوْنِ Pay attention. If this is your hilm, your kindness and your softness towards Fir'aun, who said, إِنَّمَا أَنَا رَبُّكُمُ الْعَالَى وَأَنَا رَبُّكُمُ الْعَالَى فَكَيْفَ يَكُونُ حِلْمُكَ بِعَبْدٍ قَالَ سُبْحَانَ رَبِّيَا سُبْحَانَ رَبِّيَا الْعَالَى If this is how you are to Fir'aun, how will you be towards a slave who prostrates to you and says to you, سُبْحَانَ رَبِّيَا الْعَالَى How kind and soft and gentle will Allah be? <coughs> Brothers and sisters, this is the maqam of da'wah. That the Muslim is ordered to be gentle in da'wah. If you look at the way we are making da'wah, it's more like the alat of jihad. Ya ayyulladhin amnu, qadilu ladhina yalunak minal kufar. That's how we are in da'wah. 
But Allah is telling us to be like that in jihad, we are like that in our da'wah. Allah says, O you who believe, fight the disbelievers. That's how we are in jihad. Making jihad with the disbelievers. Allah says, strike them like this and do this to them. This is how we are now. Da'wah to Muslim brothers. How will we expect that there will be any change in them? There will be no change in them. Because we are too harsh. We are too hard. Look at the Prophet as is narrated on the authority of Muawiyah ibn Hakam al sulam He said, I was praying with the Prophet وسلم, a man sneezed. I said, Ya Allah, in the prayer you're not supposed to speak. But he didn't know. And this ayah was mansur because before this the companion just to say salam to the Prophet while they were praying. So he didn't know that this ayah had been made mansur, or this hukum had been made mansur. So what did he do? When the ayah sneezed, he said, Ya Allah. He said, the people started to look at me. Look at the words that he says. And then the people began to, فَرَمَانِ الْقَوْمِ أَبْصَارِهِمْ Rama means to fire or to fling. The Amara, فَرَمَانِ الْقَوْمِ أَبْصَارِهِمْ They began to fire their eyes at me. Meaning, they looked at me, some of the young children say nowadays they were showing me daggers. So what happened? He said, ah, it was astounded by the way that people behaved towards me. And then, of course, when they did that, there was a reaction. He started to say, what's wrong with you people? Why are you behaving like this with me? In the prayer. So they began to slap their thighs. And he didn't understand. After the prayer finished, the Prophet came to him. And he ordered him that this is the prayer and that we are not supposed to do this in the prayer. And look at his own statement. I never saw a mu'allim, a teacher, better than the Prophet what did he say? He said, he didn't swear at me. He didn't reprimand. What did he do? He said, In the salat la yuslih fiha shayim al kalam. Innama hiya tasbih wa takbir wa qiraat al Quran. He said to me, it is, the prayer is only, it's not allowed for a person to speak in the prayer. It's sufficient for a person to make tasbih and takbir and qiraat al Quran. <coughs> Look at the da'wah of the Prophet. A man came into the masjid. Urinating in the masjid. Today if a man came into the masjid and urinated in the masjid, what would we do with him? I don't think he would leave the masjid alive. What did the Prophet say to the companions? They all started to blame the man. They began to blame him. So the Prophet said, down, leave him. When the man finished, the Prophet went to him. He said, this is the, these are the, this, these are the masajid. They are not built for this. They are built for prayer and for recitation of the Quran. This is the down of the Prophet. A man came to the Prophet and what did he want? He said, O Messenger of Allah, give me permission. Give me permission to make zina. Alhamdulillah. So when the man came, he said, Ya Rasulullah, uh, give me permission to make zina. He said, Ya Rasulullah, ata'adhan li fi zina. Faqal sahaba, mahma. Faqal al-Nabi sallam, ujjim. Come person, ikhtari. فاقترب من 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 صاحب الرحمة فقال له الحبيب صلى الله عليه وسلم أتحبه لأمك سبحان الله look at the way the person teaches this young man comes and he's seeking permission to make zina so he said oh messenger of Allah do you give me permission to go and do this action so the companions of the person they started reprimanding the person said come closer to me when the man came close the person said to him would you love this for your mother? So he said, La wallah ya Rasulullah, Jalani Allah fidaka faqal al Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa kadalik al nas la yuhibbuna huli ummahatihim. So when the Prophet said, Would you like this for your mother? He said, No. By Allah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept me as ransom for you, O beloved Prophet of Allah. So then the Prophet said, In the same way, the people do not want this for their mothers. قال أتحبه لأختك؟ 
قال له الله يا رسول الله جعلني الله جعل جعلني الله في داك. he said would you like this for your sister? he said no message of Allah. he said أتحب لابنتك لخالتك لعمتك قال الله والله يا رسول الله وكذلك الناس. he said would you want this for your sister or for your daughter or for your aunt? So the man replied, no, a messenger of Allah. Then the Prophet said, and so, in the same way, the people would not want this for their, for their women. So look at the Prophet Look at the Prophet and how he taught him. When he was asking for such a horrible and heinous crime, look at how the Prophet told him that this is incorrect. And then the Prophet of somebody did say, concerning this man, Allah tahir qalbah wa hasin farjah wa dhamba. After all of that, the Prophet made this dua for him. Oh Allah, purify his heart and protect his private parts and forgive him his sins. SubhanAllah, he came to seek this permission for this evil action. And he left with the dua of the Prophet Brothers and sisters, time has already passed us by and I'm seeing the daggers. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us a people when we hear the truth to recognize it, to give us the ability to act upon it, all to make it a human. When we hear the false to recognize it, false to recognize it. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <laughs> فقال إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما وقال صلى الله عليه وسلم من صلى عليه مرة واحدة صلى الله عليه فيها عشرة اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وارض الله من أربعة الخلفاء الراشدين المعهدين أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وسائر أصحاب نبيك أجمعين وأهل بيتي طيبين الطاهرين وارض اللهم عنا معهم بمنك وكرمك وجودك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين وذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر عداء الدين وحم حوزة الإسلام يا رب العالمين اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء من الأموات عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإتاء القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والضرر يعلمكم لعلكم تذكرون أذكر الله الذين يذكركم وادعوه يستجب لكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تسمعون وأقيم الصلاة